Hi there, and welcome to 10.6 Consulting. Today we're going to take a look at modifying calendars in Primavera P6. In the list section of the Calendars dialog, you can select any of the existing calendars and make changes to them using the Modify button. When the Modify button is clicked, the Calendar dialog presents you with an interactive visual calendar. You can navigate to specific dates using the arrow header buttons. You can also make changes to specific dates by selecting them and then modifying their work and non-work status. The two radio buttons at the top of the dialog allow you to change the work hours display format. You can view them as total work hours per day or detailed work hours per day. The latter of these two allows you to define the working hours down to 30 minute increments and give details about shift start and end times. To enter a non-working day, you can simply double click on the date in the calendar area. This will turn the date dark gray, indicating non-working. Another double click on the date will toggle it back to a working day. In the example shown here, you can see that Saturday and Sunday have been set to non-working. However, you do not have to go through and click on every weekend date to make this change. You can simply click on the work week button and declare the non-working days as well as the hours per day in the calendar weekly hours dialog. Just enter the number of hours for each day and use a zero for non-working days. Back in the calendar dialog, non-working days that have been set in the work week dialog can be made working days on an ad hoc basis by double clicking on them. A working day that is ordinarily set as non-working is known as an exception date. For example, you could make an individual Saturday an exception working day by double clicking on just that date. If you wanted to introduce an exception to one entire month, you can double click on the day header. In this example, we just made every Saturday in March a working day using the Saturday header. Previous and subsequent months have not been affected by this change. The Time Periods button opens the Hours Per Time Period dialog box and enables you to define the calendar's default number of hours for each time period. Activities and resources assigned to this calendar will use these values as conversion factors when users enter or display units and durations in time increments other than hours. For example, if somebody entered an activity's duration as 1W for one week, P6 looks at this table to understand how many hours are in one week and calculates the activity duration accordingly. Therefore, if you are changing the calendar from an 8 to 10 hour working day, it is imperative that you adjust this hours per time period dialog as well as the calendar weekly hours dialog to avoid seeing incorrect default units time values during resource assignments. If you'd like to learn more about Primavera P6, then 10.6 offers some great online training courses. These courses are written by industry experts and offer you all the skills you need to get up and running as a P6 scheduler. For more information, visit our website at 10.6.com for full details on how to get started.